Well Welcome. You are listening to The Travel Winds, hosted by Pete Kotzbach. This is a weekly interview show about people who travel for work and all the ups and downs that go along with it. Each episode includes a variety of discussions with athletes, business people, musicians, influencers, entertainers, and even regular folks from around the world. Thanks for listening. Here we go. Welcome to the show today. My guest is Lainey Ivishi. How are you today, Lainey? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Nice to talk to you. You're a, a traveling nurse, or you've worked as a traveling nurse for I am, yes. several years. Four. Four years. So I, I, the reason I wanted to talk to you is it, it's a little bit different because you would go to places and then be there for a while. It's not like hit and run, but it's kind of a, a long-term hit and run. How's that been? And how'd you get started with yeah. it? Yeah. Um, well, I got started with it, just kind of had some life stuff, went through a, a bad breakup when I was like 23, 24. Um, and I was living down in Texas at the time. And I was like, you know, I've heard about travel nursing. I wanted to do it. I was right at my two year mark with my like nursing job out of school. And that's what back then you had to have two years of experience before really any hospital would accept you as a traveler. So I uh, reached out to a couple agencies and it just kind of went from there. And I took my first travel assignment out in North Carolina and I was out there for six months and I've been doing it ever since. How many, how, how many different states have you worked in now? Um, I counted the other day. It's been 10. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. In four years. And it's really been yeah over four years. So I've lived in a lot of places and some places I've, I've went back to. So Arizona, I've lived out there three times, Missouri. I've lived in twice. Um, where else have I double dipped? Texas, I went back to a couple of times. So what are the what are the pros and the cons? Biggest pro is probably um, either the flexibility or the money. I mean, you make a significant amount more than like a regular full time nurse would because you're getting stipends for your housing and like food. Yeah. Um, and that's like the biggest portion of like what we're paid and it's not taxed. So our hourly rate up until COVID was pretty low. It would, I mean, some contracts I took, my hourly rate was 20 bucks an hour. And so, you know, you're working 36 hours a week. That's the only thing out of your pay that's being taxed. Yeah, right. And then the, the rest is untaxed and it's for your housing. And they give you a significant amount that you don't end up using, you know, for your housing. So yeah, that's kind of where you, you make your money there. Um, so that was definitely a perk. And then your schedule. So I sign 13 week contracts at a time. Okay. Um, and I can, at the beginning, when I'm applying for one of the jobs, I can put any time off that I want in the contract and they can either accept or deny it or like right. counter back, you know, and say, Oh, that's too many days. Can you cut back a few? Um, so you're guaranteed those days off. You never have to work holidays if you don't want to. So every contract that falls around the holidays, I say, I don't want to work, you know, and I yeah. take that time off and they can't make me work, work, which is really nice. And then I can take, I mean, I can take as much time off in between contracts as I want to. So sure. last year I took three months off at like one time. No comment. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's nice, but it's then you fair. also have to think you're not, you're not making any money at that time, you know? Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta plan and, or do a side hustle or something like that. So. Well, okay. So the pros are, are, are good. What are the cons? Uh, you're constantly living out of a suitcase. Yeah. So some travel nurses, they have like a home that they'll return to and they might do like shorter, um, travel contracts where they might go, you know, a couple hours from home or, oh, gotcha. you know, the state next door. So like they can drive on the weekends back home mm -hmm. and right. kind of be a little bit more, you know, stable in one area but for me I've lived out of my car for the last four years you know I say that like not legit lived out of my car but right. <laughs> all of my belongings are in a storage unit or at a family member's house or with me wherever I'm at and you just kind of you, you've learned what you really need versus what you want right oh for sure like, and every you like to have all your hats but you know <laughs> I take a couple yeah <laughs> yeah so you I just feel like I don't know the first travel assignment I took, I pretty sure I took everything with me that I owned 
because yeah. I didn't know. I was like, I don't know how long I'm going to be there. I don't know what I'm going to need. It was a completely different climate than I was used to. I was going to be by the beach, but then the mountains were only a few hours away and I was going to be there back ski season. So I'm like, yeah. I need, I need swimsuits and I need my ski stuff. I don't, I don't know what to leave. So, uh, now I try and take as little as I can and I purge like everything I got, like I have before I leave to my next place or before I go home, just because when you pack so much, like pack and unpack, it just gets annoying. And so yeah. I'm like, well, Goodwill can have this. I don't need it. <laughs> I, I'm saying way well, I, I realized like when, when, when I travel now, I, I, for the most part, I take exactly what I know I'm going to need. Like, I don't, I try not to bring, like I might bring an extra pair of shoes or something like, oh, what if it rains or whatever. But for the most part, I know exactly what I'm going to need. And now that's all I take. Yeah. The bad thing is for me is like, I accumulate things. So wherever I'm at, I, oh, I gotcha. will, you're still shopping. Yeah, I mean, you're there. Yeah. Well, not, it's not like material things like clothes and stuff like, yeah, I'll get something here and there, but it's, you know, hobby related. So yeah. if I'm going out to Arizona, well, I want to take golf clubs because I might golf or I want to take a saddle because I might get to team rope or <laughs> I don't know, you know, like just yeah. different things. So, and then when I'm out West, most of the time I'll stay out there. So then it just keeps going with me. It's hard to get some things back home. Yeah. Okay, so you just, you need friends in all those areas. That way you could just leave yeah. the stuff there. Yeah. I, I've slowly acquired them to where I can do that, but you know, everyone doesn't want junk of somebody else's in their house. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta be subtle about it. I know. <laughs> oh, did I leave that there? Well, I'll pick that up in a couple of months. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'll be back. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. I'll sleep but, on your couch too while I'm there. <laughs> just don't sell it exactly i'll need the clubs when i get back to scottsdale come on <laughs> so what what are the other cons <clears throat> um really like you you never know where you're gonna go or like what the job market's gonna be like so i mean are, are the other seasons happy that you're there or are they pissed off that you're getting more money than them or uh it's hit or miss it just depends um some places are really used to travel nurses. So they're like thankful that you're there because if you weren't there, they would be drowning. Yeah. Um, this past year and a half to two years, there's definitely been some more like negative the emotions COVID towards or... us. Well, one, yeah. I mean, the, the contract prices like skyrocketed. It's the most yeah. money I've made in that industry since I started. I mean, the contract rates were just absolutely incredible. They're slowly starting to come down and like, they're not as high as they used to be like in the peak of COVID, but um, it, you know, it's the time where there's, there's famous, I say famous, I don't know the right terminology, but like uh, influencers that are travel nurses and things like that. And they have like aired all of the nitty gritty. I mean, like yeah. they would straight up tell people how much they're making and it's kind of a slap in the face because we really are doing the exact same work that a full-time nurse yeah, that, is doing that's what i was wondering because my, my, my yeah. niece works as a, as, a, as a nurse at a hospital in santa barbara but i don't know if they have traveling nurses out to ask her i'm sure i mean i feel like they're all over now but um yeah it's kind of just like a slap in the face like oh hey i'm doing the exact same job you're doing and i'm making three times the amount that you are yeah. um but, you know, you also have to consider like what we are doing too. You know, it's hard to leave every three months and, and go somewhere new and you get one, maybe two days of training for the hospital. So, yeah. and you're expected to just jump in, oh, like you've been there for, you know, a year or two. And then you also like, not only are you getting hired on for a specific unit, but you have to be able to float to a lot of different units in the hospital so they're foreign to you too, you know? So it's not just getting used to like one unit. You're pretty much getting used to a whole hospital in one to two days and then just kind of rolling with it. So there's, there's give and takes to both sides, but there are some nurses that do not like travel nurses. <laughs> I, I, I could, I can only imagine. Yeah. But there so, are some women that don't like other women regardless. That is true. And it is a very female dominant. Yeah. um career so you get a lot of that but that's with and without travel nurses you're gonna have that that's what i'm saying <laughs> yeah it's just a girl thing it is as i like to say so yeah. uh, how has it been kind of uh balancing you know 
personal life, work life. I mean, that's gotta be, is that a pro or a con? Um, it depends on where I'm at. I would say this past year, so all my families in the Midwest are in Missouri, Illinois, Tennessee, um, those three states mainly, like some in Kentucky, but like kind of all right there. Like I can drive, yeah. you know, three to five hours and see all of my family and friends in this area. Um, so this past year I spent out in Nevada and California and it's just a little harder to come home. Just, you have to take a full day to travel. You yeah. know, you used to be able to get direct flights a lot more places and you really can't. And then obviously this year, I'm sure you're aware with flying it's hit or miss, you know, you don't know if, if your flights are going to get canceled yeah. or <laughs> delayed. So redirected. Um, yeah. yeah. And a lot of hospitals have also cracked down on the amount of days that you can request off for a contract. So there's been contracts where I've requested 21 days off out of 13 weeks. I mean, that's a lot of days, you know, but they're like, we need, we need all the nurses we can get. Like, we don't care if we'll honor the time that you want off. Come on. And then other nurses are like, we have a max seven days that you can ask off. Oh wow. So, um, a couple of places in California that I worked, they were that way. And it just makes it harder. You know, I need at least four to five days off in a row to make, to make it, it worth the money to spend on flights back home. And then I want to see everybody in that, in that small amount of time. So, you know, I'm kind of neglecting a lot, you know, my, my parents have, they've been like, Oh, you, you always want to go see your friends, you know? I'm like, well, like well, if they yeah. don't get to come out and see me, like I want to see everybody. So I want to like try and utilize my time the best, but I can also see where my family kind of feels like, we're getting the short end of the stick. You know, your friends get to see you all the time because you go and do a vac vacations with yeah. them and whatever. But yeah, I've, I've learned that I need to prioritize like trips home for my family and then trips to see my friends. So which you've done been, rather well. I try the first well, couple of years. It wasn't that way, but, <laughs> but you had some fun trips. Oh, I've had so many. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I get to see the, uh, the aftermath of uh, Cancun and, Napa yeah. Valley. I mean, what, what are some of the cool places that you, that you've been able to see oh, oh, gosh. On, on, on over the last four years? Because okay. I, so I say that because okay. traveling, I mean, I, I think the big pro of the, of what you do is the fact that you get the time off and, and you get to choose, like you can take some time off in between contracts and all that because yeah. you, you've done some phenomenal trips and done some fun things in between. Yeah. And even on my travel contracts when I am like working, um, you know, I work three days a week, so yeah. I can have four days off and I, I do night shift. So that kind of can come into play with my schedule and I will sacrifice sleep for some fun. Um, <laughs> so I'm not the most, no. <laughs> I can't help it. I have FOMO. I can't miss out on a good time. So, um, you know, it's nice. I can stack my days and I can work a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And then I can have seven days off without having to even take vacation days. Yeah. So if you, if you work for a place that, uh, you know, is pretty lenient with scheduling, you can do a lot of trips within your contract, which is nice and not have to wait, you know, in between your stints. So I've been able to go on a lot of cool trips. Um, yeah. my top ones, Havasu Falls is definitely up there. Um, been on a lot of really cool ski trips like Banff. We went up to Banff. Um, Big Sky, just all throughout Montana. Montana is a really cool state. Um, even out in California, I did a big road trip, um, kind of did the Big Sur up, yeah. you know, Highway One, um, went into Napa, we explored, you know, the cities. We went to um, Yosemite. That was pretty neat uh what other trips i've done just lots of fun road trips you know long long weekends mountains are always kind of my jam so i like to find some mountains to go yeah, to the tahoe um, area and all that yeah yeah tahoe was really cool being i worked down in reno so that was only an hour and a half yeah hour really drive to the lake um so did a lot of skiing a lot of hiking um you know throwing a beach every now and then went to mexico went to the bahamas um yeah kind of all over <laughs> i was gonna say it's, it's it's been fun watching yeah it's been fun to do it it, it can be exhausting at times because you're just on the go all the time but 
it's worth well, it. How's it been uh, on your? How many? How many traveling nurses are married and have families versus just they're starting? Two? They're starting to become more popular. Um, if you like, what I've noticed, like during COVID, when a lot of stuff went, um, we're working from remote. Yeah, a lot of husbands. And I say this, it's, I'm not like trying to be that way, but majority of the time, the female is the nurse and, right. you know, the husband is working from home remotely somewhere. And so they've been able to bring kids or just like travel together and like take further contracts away from home and stuff. So it is starting to become more prevalent, um, to see, but you also have to think of like, um, if they have kids, you know, if their kids are old enough to stay yeah, at home by themselves. Yeah. That's one thing, you know, you can do remote schooling too now. Um, but if they're young kids, you know, you either have to have someone that travels with you to watch your kids or find, I can't imagine having to find a new daycare or sitter or something oh, yeah. while you work every place you go. Like that would be pretty stressful, I think. Um, so yeah, I don't know too many that do that like by themselves, like if they're single and have kids that travel with them, but yeah. older kids, I've seen a lot, you know, like older high school or early college, you know, that are just like going with their mom somewhere. Um, and then like young married couples too. That last, um, uh, trip I made up to San Jose at the RV park. I think I told mm -hmm. you that the people next to me, the wife was a, a, a traveling nurse mm -hmm. and he, he, he was a, a video editor. So he worked from his computer. So, and they had two small yeah. kids and, and they, they stayed at the park. That's, they just RV'd it. And yeah. And that'd be great if you could do that. I mean, imagine that life that you're exposing yeah. your kids to that'd be super cool but you know it's not ideal for everybody but yeah, yeah i think it's great if you could do that yeah it's pretty cool how has it affected your relationships uh like romantic relationships sure i mean you know i mean even even with your friends you know i mean oh you're, you're well, gone and romantically you yeah. know I mean. um friend wise it really hasn't affected much it's actually probably been the best case for my friends because they travel too for a living so yeah we've been able to do a lot of really cool things that we probably wouldn't be able to if we had normal jobs um and it just allows normal me jobs <laughs> well you gotta think your, your job's not very normal either so uh, and my best friends do exactly what you do so um yeah it's let us do a lot of really cool things like in the years that I think are like the best years, you know, in my mind right now, there are my golden years. So, um, what? yeah, I mean, I'm in my like golden years right now. Well, and I probably will think that too, whenever I'm <laughs> in the next phase of life, but right now, you know, I'm having so much fun traveling and yeah. getting to do a lot with my friends, even with my family too. You know, my parents have, they've come out on a few different contracts and yeah. we've gotten to explore different parts, you know, that they've never been to, like they never been out um, to the area in California that I was. So that, that was pretty cool to be able to experience that with them too. Um, so yeah, I would say it definitely is like strengthened my friendships. Um, my, my romantic relationships, uh, there's been times where it's been a stressor just because you never know where you're going to go next. And that's hard if someone's like trying to like plan like a life with you, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a little challenging. And when they're like, Hey, so what are you going to do next? Well, it's like, I don't know. I don't know where there's going to be jobs. Like, obviously I have to make money. And for me, I've always said that I'm either going to stay travel nursing until I find a job that is totally unrelated to nursing I got or just like not, not your traditional nursing job. Like I'm never going to leave travel nursing to go work full-time in a hospital At somewhere. One place. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not worth it to me. Like after I've had all the perks of travel nursing, like there's so many other jobs that are way less stressful yeah. and I don't have to worry about someone dying, you know, like <laughs> just when you get paid like a significant amount of more to do what you're doing, you know, like, why would you take a huge drastic cut to do the same thing when like, it doesn't change yeah. the stressors at least. So that's always what I've said. Um, and so that so does travel kind of, nurse or no nurse. Yeah, pretty much. Or like, you know, an, an untraditional nursing job where, you know, um, I, yeah. don't, I don't even know. I haven't found it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to still travel nurse until I do. Um, so yeah, it just makes it hard to like plan because one, I don't have a house either. And that's always been, for yeah. me, that's probably the most um, 
unsettling thing for myself just because I do like a sense of like home and and just like familiarity you know and so not having that for myself and having to like rely on family or friends or something like you just can't get that if you're looking for it and you can you can do that with a significant other but it's still not your home until you're married or you know or something like that so it can be challenging and it's also there comes a lot of trust stuff you know like I travel to new places I'm going out and about meeting new people and you know that can be a challenge if you don't have someone that trusts you too so and and there's a reputation with travel nurses I mean (laughs) I'm not gonna lie they're you know they're there for three months at a time so a lot of people are like oh they're here for a good time it'll be like very casual like that type of thing and that's not necessarily what I'm after so but um, there's always it is is, I'm I'm just thinking out loud here because we've talked a lot but never like one-on-one and and gotten in depth when you started four years ago were were, did you think about the negatives or were you just stoked about the the more money and, and the ability to travel Honestly, I was thinking I had literally like went through a horrible breakup where you were I was like, I'm out. I was like devastated, you know, I, I was thinking I was going to be married and popping out babies, you know. So when I just kind of felt like the rug got pulled out from underneath me and I stuck around um, for probably four to six months, I couldn't tell you three to six somewhere in there at the same job I was at. Yeah. And I was just like, gosh, I hate it here. I hate I hate the possibility of having to like, be here you know, continue, yeah. continue this life that we had together that like, we're, we're no longer, you know, there's just too many like memories and whatever. And I was like, I gotta do something. I gotta shake it up. And so that's when I got into travel nursing. So I really mm-hmm. honestly was just like, I need to get the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> so that's really why I went in. I mean, obviously there were perks and I was like, yeah, it'd be great to make more money. I was young at the time, you know, and what I thought I was making, I thought it was good money. Yeah. And then when I went and traveled nurse, I was like, holy cow, I make, you know, what I make in a month and yeah. a week. I'm like, holy cow, this is great. So I I quickly figured out the perks, but yeah. it was not for those reasons at the beginning. Well, cool, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I think everyone ends up, it, you know, everyone ends up in their own story for, for so many different reasons. There's no oh yeah, bad answer. Of, well, I did this and that, like f- you fell into it or. Things yeah. Happen. And I honestly didn't think I would do it as long as I have, you know, I kind of thought it'd be a year or two year type deal. Oh, and then you. I'd figure out like at the beginning, I kind of was like, man, I'll, I'll use this to figure out where I want to be in the country because I had yeah. visited a lot of places still at that time. And in my mind, I was like, okay, I like this area. I like this area. I don't like this. Like, you know, I, I kind of had like a lot of ideas in my head of like where I would end up or what I would like and what I wouldn't and man has it been eye-opening to travel nurse and live in a lot of different places that I never thought I would live or that I thought I would absolutely hate and have like met some of the most incredible people in these places and like some that I'm still like really good friends with and that'll probably be lifelong friends with you know so it's pretty pretty amazing what has happened over the you know, That's, everyone has, always asks me like oh what's your favorite place to visit because you know i've been to i think 38 <clears throat> states with with, mm-hmm. with carmen you know because of boot barn and i'm like i don't know it's, a lot, it's i mean i'm like it's like i like that area because of that i wouldn't i would never live up in montana north dakota wyoming during the winter Ever. yeah well that's just you want to hear M- MF and my Carmen. one experience with that <laughs> so I uh I took an assignment up in Montana and I started in July and I think I my contract was supposed to be up like middle of October beginning or middle of October and I was living in a camper at the time I had a a camper that I traveled out of and uh loved the hospital up there didn't necessarily love the city I was in Billings didn't love the city but like really conveniently located to everything you know I could drive to Bozeman I could get to like all these gorgeous mountains had a really fun time. Um, and then I knew I wanted to go to Arizona right after that. So those jobs typically don't start until December. Every now and then you might get lucky and find one in November. 
So I'm like, okay, I got October to December and I'm already out West. I really yeah. don't want to drive this camper back home and then head back out Good West man. again, you know? So, um, all the girls at work in Montana are like, oh my gosh, just, just stay on like half a contract and get done at the beginning of December. And I was like, you know, I would do that, but I'm living in a camper and it's not winterized. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if, if I could handle it, you know? And yeah. they're like, oh heck, it doesn't snow here until after the first of the year. Most years they're like, you're yeah. golden. If you stay till the first of December, like you're golden. Sure enough, I signed my contract like four or five days later, and I kid you not, it snowed 14 inches the very next morning. Yeah. All of my pipes froze. They busted. I didn't have heat. I mean, like it, it was horrible. That is <laughs> so it was a really long eight weeks after I stayed there. I, I, I feel sorry for you, but I don't. You should have checked. I mean, well, yeah. I, I, I went to, I've, been to, I've been to Kalispell and I've been to Bozeman. And when I went to Bozeman, it was April 1st or 2nd, and it was snowing, and it was 25 degrees. I'm like, oh, my God, it's April. It's spring. Oh, yeah. And then my yeah, friends I were think like, it's ah, it's negative 35 a couple months ago. I'm like, oh. Yeah, that's not for me. No. It didn't get that cold, but, like, it snowed probably five times, like, over a foot yeah. in that eight weeks that I was there. And every single time my pipes froze every single time I had, I had heaters underneath my camper. Doesn't I matter. mean, I did every, everything I possibly could to prevent it. Nope. Every time I was showering out of like a 24 hour gym because yeah. I had no running water. <laughs> it was, it was a good, good learning experience, but yeah, I, I couldn't do it again. So there's the glamour part. Yeah. But a lot of people don't live out of campers either. So yeah, you know, that's a whole other aspect. You no, know, that's because right, we got we got our camper in January. So I've been, I think I spent about six or seven weeks in it, eight weeks now, total. That's fun. Yeah, but I mean, are you liking it? Well, I'm not in in snowing weather, so it's yeah, you're bad. in pretty mild, yeah. mild weather out in California. Yeah, staying, you know, but it, like in the summertime when I was in San Jose, you know, where it's getting 95, 98 degrees, and then you're in the camper, mm -hmm. it's the exact opposite. It just ends up becoming an oven so oh yeah i'd come back at the end of the day i'm like oh my god like yeah. I, I sometimes I'd, I'd fall asleep not thinking about it and then i'm like i'm waking up sweating because it's like it's the opposite <laughs> you know it's just like oh shit i didn't put the ac on damn it it's like yep familiar with that end too yeah you look at it and it's still 85 degrees inside your camper and you're like oh my god yep so yeah I, and the, the the thing I think everybody should drive a camper once, at least once, in a windy situation. I think oh, I it's think terrifying. You, I think you would give give trucks more leeway. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like like because like when I'm driving my 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 Cherokee, I'm just like ah, da, 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 da. hey, get out of the way! Ah, why? Man, when you're driving the camper and it's windy, it's like oh oh you know yeah. you're, you're riding a sailboat. It's kind of crazy. Oh yeah, a lot of people have no idea in like what it takes to stop like. I had a truck and trailer, you know, a truck and a, a camper yeah. and it was a pretty big camper, you know, it was 32 foot camper. And so like you can stop a vehicle pretty quick, Yeah. but if you're pulling a trailer, you know, and if you're going downhill, like there's all kinds of things that factor into that, you know, like it's a challenge and people don't think about that. It'll cut you off real quick. Or, That's what I'm saying. Like you need, I think everybody should do that. So Next time you're you're driving around a camper or a big truck or, or anything, you gotta give them a little slack. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah, it changed how I drive. Like I just came back from Vegas in, in the Cherokee, but now I'm still more conscious. I I drive better now, ever since I've got oh, yeah. a camper. I feel like that too. Yeah, because but... I'm always now like before. I think I was just driving and reacting. You know, it's L.A., it's California. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. but now I'm looking ahead. You know, because in the camper, I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna have to get off in a mile and a half, and can't get in between those trucks. Let me come over here. And I'm like, I'm, I have to plan it out more. So, yeah, well, I can't even imagine doing that in California because I had a car out there, and man, that traffic is it's pretty intense. It's yeah, it's different. That's a good word. <laughs> well, that's I always when I would go to um, God, at Louisville, and they're like, oh, the traffic is pretty bad in the morning. I'm like, yeah, not really. Yeah, I mean, if you're used to California and especially the area that you're in, like yeah. 
I don't really think there's much worse traffic. I mean, maybe up in like New York, but it's just because the infrastructure, you know, it's not like the 12 or however many lanes you guys have in yeah. California and people are just like flying and they don't care. They're like, get out of the way. Well, I always tell people we, we don't uh, gauge thing in, in, in miles, we gauge thing in minutes because like if, if you wanted to get to like, I'm going to downtown LA tonight for our New Year's Eve dinner, a pre pre New Year's Eve dinner. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's 19 miles, but it's going to take 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's 20 miles. It matters what time of the day you're going, what free was you oh, taking. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So it's all time. I did learn that working out there. I was in the Bay and, you know, in my mind, yeah, same way. yeah, I'm so used to being like, Oh, I'm 15 miles. It's going to take me 15 minutes. No, I'd have to leave an hour before work most days to make sure I got there. Like with 15 minutes to spare yeah. and sometimes then if you if you were pushing it like there was a bad wreck well you're gonna be late for work i used to live in, in alameda and work in the city so i'd take the mm -hmm. bay bridge every every day of my life and one time uh, bill clinton was the president and they they stopped the free the, the bridge to let the president go across like i mean they stopped oh us. yeah well you can imagine what the traffic when you stop the bay bridge in the morning it's just i mean it's eight lanes of whatever I was like 45 minutes late and it was like a three mile oh, drive. Yeah. That's, that's no fun. Yeah. So it, again, it's, it's, it's always interesting. What are the b biggest differences you've seen in the people across the country? Mm. Like, like w things that surprise you, like uh, maybe you thought Californians were flakier or whatever, or maybe they were, or... I get asked that all yeah, the time. I would, I would definitely say of all the places I've lived, um, California has like surprised me the most just because prior to live, living out there and like working out there, I had only ever visited San Diego yeah, and Palm Springs, I think were the only two areas. And then I had flown into LA, but like never left the airport. Right. So I really was never exposed to like being fully surrounded by a bunch of California people. Um, the majority of the California people that I had met were your typical stereotyped Californians that yeah. everyone's like, they're from California, send them back, you know, whatever. So like, I kind of always just had that in my mind. Obviously I know you and I know oh, Jessica no. Blessing, you know, we're like the outliers, <laughs> the outliers. <laughs> but in my, but in my mind, you know, that was what California was to me. And then, um, fast forward to this year, I spent almost eight months out there. Yeah. And I will say in the Bay area, it's, it's not for me. The people there are just, they're just not very friendly. Like I'm used to like walking down the sidewalk and saying hi to everybody that you cross paths with. And, and they look That's at you there. like you're an alien, you know, like they won't even speak back to you. It's yeah. so like, that kind of is a little disheartening when you're used to it and you're just like, geez, what's up their ass, you know, <laughs> but you just kind of got to learn that that's just, I guess the way that they're used to it. But, um, you know, like I spent a lot of time in like central and Northern California and yeah. everyone there was so friendly, you know, just really just felt like I was kind of back home, you know, around Midwestern people that I'm used to that are always just super friendly and nice. And yeah, yeah so that was pretty eye opening and just like seeing a lot of different parts of California that I hadn't been to. Um, it was just, it was nice you know, just to not people. have that negative opinion of it. <laughs> I always tell people, I go, cause when I go to, when I work the rodeo, they're like, where are you from? And I go, Los Angeles. Like, you don't seem like you're from California. I yeah. Know, I don't know what that means, but I go, we have so many people that we have, we have a lot of jerks. We have a lot of nice people. We have a lot of idiots. We have a lot of smart, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Cause we just have so many of everything. Yeah. California is just a big state too. It's gigantic. Yeah, yeah, I learned that too. <laughs> like, but it's beautiful. There's so I mean, they have everything there that you need. But, but I, I remember when I went up to it was North Dakota and I was driving down uh, mm -hmm. from Bismarck down to um, Rapid City in South Dakota. And then I went up to take mm -hmm. People would wave at you. Like, you don't do that in, in California. Like, no. Hey, you doing? And I'm like, I don't know that guy. You know? And then yeah. at the end, I'm like, I'm just waving at everybody. It's kind of cool. 
like everyone's See, nice. that, that's what i'm used to like growing yeah. up we, i kind of grew up in like a smaller town you know everybody knows everybody everyone waves at everybody like yep. when you see someone hey how's your mom how's your dad you know it's kind of just very homey and you know a lot of community and so i in certain states like that's kind of how montana was too when i was up there oh, yeah it was pretty nice everyone was so friendly so helpful like if I, I got stuck in the mountains one night or one night one day um my truck just like buried in snow and i ha i couldn't get out and i had no service no nothing and a bunch of snowmobilers they came around the corner and they're like hey are you okay and i'm like no i can't get my truck out like i gotta get out of here and they all like jumped on my truck helped me oh imagine my... that the pretty girl gets help from pe <laughs> people no they're just being nice yeah. like they really were uh i'm gonna look at it that way <laughs> imagine how that works no i think the pretty girls get help wherever they're at it doesn't matter i don't know I, I wouldn't sure say that, that pretty sure that's how it works no. I, I think the people are super nice i mean that's you know living in los Angeles, i mean you're, you're more likely to get a mil middle finger than a wave you know what i mean oh, yeah. but mm -hmm. uh yeah when i when i travel outside it's it's nice to see the things you 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 hope to see you know even like dallas oh, yeah. is bad, but dallas is pretty everyone's busy there too i mean yeah dallas is pretty busy i haven't really spent much time in dallas aside from market you know yeah um if i'm in that area i'm always normally in fort worth so that's a little different but i just feel like texas in general most of the time people are pretty friendly yeah yeah but... i mean like i've been out just like downtown dallas is no different than than downtown other cities you know what i mean where yeah or yeah. like you said like there's a really famous uh quarterback named joe montana i don't know if you have mm -hmm. so joe montana played for the 49ers he lived up in the bay area and i was up in up there for work this is 30 years ago and and joe montana was the man you know i mean of the, of the bay area he was super Bowl champ all that and he was walking down the sidewalk and i'm, I'm looking at joe montana i'm like holy shit, that was because the day before he was at the uh, all pro game and i'm like i just mm -hmm. watched him on tv like yesterday and he's walking and so many people are so into their own world they didn't even recognize that joe montana's walking next to them <laughs> the most famous guy in the bay area and nobody even looked up to say to say hi he came into the store i was working in he, he got what he needed and super nice and friendly no one recognized him because they all got their own little oh my god my dave my dad i gotta get this i gotta get to starbucks i gotta get, I get to get the dry cleaners and i got yeah you know they're in a hurry yeah yeah whereas in other parts of the states i don't get that as much i get the more no hey hey how's it going yeah i can see that too i mean i i really didn't visit many like big cities besides like the bay area i didn't even go into la um but mainly i kind of stayed on the outskirts of the yeah. cities when i was in california and that was nice the smaller towns you know yep. were pretty pretty nice to see and experience the people there where, where would you like to work that you haven't i in miami or florida or um places that have been on my list up in like washington i would like to go up there okay um not necessarily seattle but i mean that's like obviously the main the main place that travel nurses will go um just in general in washington it seems pretty beautiful i've never even visited up there so well you went that's to always been. did you yeah i mean that's but because, that's oregon i mean we but e eastern washington's really similar where mm -hmm. it's not the green yeah it's you know it's wheat fields and, and hay yeah fields. so i've been up in that vicinity just never yeah. really experienced much time um in washington but so that that would be on my list um where else i've kind of checked off the majority of the states that i've wanted to go to okay. i would do something down in florida maybe there's a lot of like hca hospitals and they're not the greatest to work for so i don't know what hca is. it's it's just a, a company that owns hospitals oh. and they just they have a reputation of just not being the, the greatest um and that's a lot of hospitals down in florida so there's a lot that goes into like yeah where that where you want to where yeah and uh you know i've done i've done assignments where i've taken a crappy job 
whether it's like something that like I I'm specialized in a certain thing. And so like, I've taken a, just a generic like med surge job, which I hate, <laughs> but it's for the location. You know, I was in Fort Worth at the time and I was yeah. living at the blessings, you know, like you can't right beat there. that. Like that was a great, a great trade. Like I didn't love my job, but I loved my social at. life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I've also done the opposite, you know, where I've taken a really high paying job, like out in the Bay. And I despised having to be in the Bay. Anytime I had a day off, I was gone. So yeah. It's just like, it's a trade, like what's, what's worth it. You know, sure. I would say like best of both worlds was probably Arizona, like Phoenix Scottsdale okay. area. I had a pretty decent job there and I liked the hospital I was at and all the people. And I mean, like I wanted to be there, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's there's a lot hot, that goes so. into it. Mm -hmm. it. Very hot. But if you go in the right time of the year, you don't really have to worry about that. Yeah. You get really, but really mild winters really mild I, I i was born and raised in phoenix so and scottsdale so that's mm -hmm. that's where i would have gone to high school i guess but um yeah it's it's the, the summers are, are horrific and that's just like vegas i mean you, you don't yeah. want to go to vegas in june july or august yeah no yeah you, but really you, i feel like oh sorry go ahead. Go ahead. oh i was just gonna say really like aside from washington washington or oregon maybe I feel like I've hit, oh, what am I thinking? The two, the two major states, Alaska and Hawaii. Those are definitely two that would be on my list. See, I, Alaska uh, would be really, really cool. Yeah. I, I think um, you would kind of, they, they, they have the same issues. Because like Hawaii, uh, you always hear about island fever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get off the islands. Like it's a six hour yeah. drive to, or flight to LA, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and Alaska is the same boat. It's like, I mean, it's not like you can't just drive up to Alaska. I mean, I guess right. you can, but it's I just days. think for, you know, for a, a 13 week contract that you're there for three months. So yeah, that would be cool. If, if I had to be stranded for three months and not be able to leave and go home, I'd want it to probably be in Alaska or Hawaii, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because there's so much to do. I mean, you can hike and explore the beaches if you're, in Hawaii or, you know, fly to another Island and yeah. go explore that, you know, and up in Alaska, gosh, there's so much you could do. So I just feel like it wouldn't be that bad. But you, like, well, in Hawaii, it wouldn't matter what year you can go there year round. I mm -hmm. think if you're going to do it like an Alaska contract, it'd be nice like spring or fall, you know, before the, or before summer. the winter or summer. Yeah. 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 I would definitely have to do it before the winters because that would probably be a drastic change. Yeah. I met a couple of girls that actually they were travel nurses from Alaska. And so, um, I worked with them in Reno and I asked them, you know, okay, I've never been to Alaska. It's on yeah. my list. You know, like, is it worth going? And they're like, we honestly are going to stop traveling because we miss Alaska so much. And wow. I was like, Oh, okay. And then I asked, you know, I, I don't know much about it. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, how, how bad are the winters? You know, like apparently it's dark all the time. And, they're like, no, it, it's almost like dusk. She's like, when people say it's dark all the time, it's, she said, it's actually like her favorite time of the year. Wow. And she's like a super, super active, like, you know, hikes and explores and does a lot of really cool stuff. And I'm yeah. like, oh, wow. Like I would have never thought, you know, and she's like, really, it's like the best time. So that was kind of interesting. I just don't want to live where it's in the negatives. Oh yeah. No, yeah. That was a great thing about travel nursing is I got to yeah. literally be in fair weather places when you all year to. round. Yeah. Well, and that's uh, Hawaii would be cool for you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know, if you went for the 13 or 14 weeks or whatever, that'd be yeah. work that yeah. out. I know. I know. It's on my list. That's a, a hard part though. You have to get licensed in all those places. Oh, so like w my license is um, part of a, it's called the compact licensing agreement. And so um, my license will transfer states. I think there's like 35 to 38 of them now yeah. that I don't have to apply for a new license, but like California, I had to get a new license to work out there in Nevada. I had to get one. Um, and then Alaska, Washington and Hawaii, you all have to have separate, a, a separate license. And, you know, those add up, I mean, they're anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to, I think California is like 600 to get and you have to go and you have to get you know fingerprinted and drug tested yeah. and all these 
you know, all these things that it's just, you need that. Just you to have to line it. You have to, <laughs> right. You do. I, I coached the lacrosse in high school and it's, it was, I had to get fingerprinted. I had to go to the FBI you know, my fingerprints had to go mm-hmm. to the FBI. I had to get the tubero- tuberculosis test and mm-hmm. all this other, I'm like, it's like a $1,200 a year job. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So you have to weigh those, you know, options and some travel companies that you work for, they'll pay for that. But I think Hawaii, out of your Hawaii would be worth it though. I think Hawaii and Alaska both would. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Because Alaska uh, is probably the last state I visit, but because I want to see all 50 states, mm-hmm. so I need to get back East. I just went up to New York for the first time. And that I was, mean, New York, that yeah. was also pretty yeah. eye opening. But I want to get to like Vermont, Maine, New Hampshire. Yeah. yeah, that'd be pretty up there. Yeah. You should go in the fall. I feel like that'd be the best. That's, you got to. That's what my that's what my parents used to tell me. Because they went uh to see the changing of the, of the leaves and all that, like September, mm-hmm. October. I said that's the best time. Yeah, looks gorgeous. Yeah. Why not, right? Mm-hmm. Gonna, can you do international with the nursing? Um, yes, you can. Um one of the cool things like part of the u.s you can actually go to guam i've had some friends that i've met that have went to guam which is pretty cool and you don't have yeah. to do anything like extra well, US providence, um, right right. Yeah. right but um i've talked to some people who have went over to australia and new zealand um and then europe and then my aunt she actually um worked as a civilian nurse for the navy and she worked in Italy for three years. She signed a contract with them. Um, it's just when you go overseas, you get into different types of nursing. So yeah. here in the States, we have a ton of autonomy. Like we can do so much. Whereas over in the UK, I've heard, I don't know anybody that works over there, you know, but from what I've read on like job boards and things like that on Facebook groups of people who are trying to go over there, it's more of like, what a nurse's aide could do in the States. Oh, wow. Okay. So like, they just don't have as much ability to do some of the skills and things that like we're so used to. So I, I feel like it would probably be a challenge for me just because you'd want to do what I'd want to. Yeah. Um, and then Australia 13 weeks and well, and I think those are longer contracts. You have to commit to a little bit longer. Yeah. And I don't know that stuff off the top of my head, but yeah, after I looked into it, I, I really wanted to go to Australia. I thought that would be really cool. Yes. But they're, the way that they're structured there, it's really weird. Well, now, You're not guaranteed work. And COVID's a little different too down there. True, yeah. This was prior to COVID when I looked into it. But yeah, it was just, there was a lot of stuff that you had to go through um, in order to like be able to work over there. And you weren't necessarily guaranteed hours. It was just kind of like, oh, you may get to work one day a week. You may get to work five days a week. You really don't know. It's just kind of like a that would suck. Yeah. And so for me, I'm like, that's a huge expense to go over there. Like I would rather just go for fun. Yeah. And not have to worry about like, am I gonna run out of money? <laughs> like, yeah. am I gonna have a job? You know? Yeah, if if they could guarantee it mm-hmm. better would be I couldn't do that either. It'd freak me out. Yeah. Cause like here in the States, most contracts that I that I sign are guaranteed hours. So they'll call off their staff, like their full-time staff before they call us off. Because if they call us off, they still have to pay us like we were there. Yeah. and you're So it's just a, a double expense. Yeah. So, I mean, that'd be really silly if they did that. Yeah. But it would still be cool to have that kind of experience to, to oh, see yeah. members of the world and get paid. Yeah. I agree. All right. So where's your next contract? Do you know? Well, I'm kind of throwing a curveball into my life and uh I'm, I'm actually most likely going to put it on hold and go into a different career you so. hope kind of sort of maybe yeah it's looking like it okay good yeah yeah so maybe get into your world a little bit into the sales side of things good luck yeah. i know <laughs> yeah um, i always tell but and your best friends can tell you better than i could but I mean, I, I, Casey wouldn't change it. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't know about Jess, but you know, yeah, it'd be, it'd be hard for, to go back to a, a, an office job. 
Right. Mm. And that's not me either. I mean, I don't, I've always said, I don't think I could ever work an office job. So I need something a little, a little more exciting. Um, Sales has always been an interest of mine, but I just didn't know what industry, you know? So I'm kind of looking into medical device sales and that will combine, you know, the sales side of things and my medical background, which will be kind of nice. Um, be really nice. Actually. I'll get to, yeah, I'll get to combine them both and then, you know, see what, what happens. And, and you know, just like, and you'll find out, it's like, uh, and that was, I was telling before we, before we start recording, you know, Sarah, tell the hats, they're like, Hey, do you want, do you want Nevada? And I'm like, no, you know, it's like, I guess I could go to Vegas, but I don't want to go up to Reno, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's, and he's like, well, I got Northern California. I got Oregon open. I got Idaho open and Utah. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not traveling. Because, you know, you go from St. George to Salt Lake. There's nothing in between. That's 400 miles, 350 miles. Yeah. There's really almost nothing in between St. George and Salt Lake City. You better hope you got some pretty strong accounts in both those cities. Otherwise, yeah, it's not exactly. really worth going. <laughs> well, that's um, the, the cinch rep. She, she has those states. So she's based in uh, near Paso Robles. Mm-hmm. you know because now you know california a little bit central I california know, weird. but uh her territory is arizona utah nevada california and i'm like oh, Man. yeah so she does that loop she goes through reno and then goes through Winnemucca and then goes over salt lake city and then down to st george and then the nevada into las vegas and then that um, man that stretch from like vegas to reno or vegas to Winnemucca either way nothing nothing i've done that drive yeah. I mean, you got I have it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know which, which territory would be worse that one. Or if you have like the Dakotas, you know, up there, cause there's not really much up there in like Wyoming and Montana, you know, if you have Man. Wyoming, Montana and the Dakotas, like you're going to be driving quite a bit of ways and in hours, some, some negative weather. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause I remember going from Cheyenne up to Gillette. Mm-hmm. We did it at night and like, in California, even if you're out in the middle of Central California, there's still lights, mm-hmm. there's still people out, you know. And you go into middle Wyoming at night, there's no off ramps, there's no lights, there's no street lights, there's no, I mean, you can look in all directions and not see, maybe see like one house 30 miles away. Yep. I, I, like you have beautiful views of the stars that you don't necessarily get. Where you you're never at. see them here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't even know there's stars up there. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, God, Lord, we we had a, a, a flat tire on the trailer mm-hmm. of the high school finals, and it was like twenty four mile round trip to like to the next off ramp to come back because we the guy that got the flat was behind us. He's like, oh, "Hey, no. I just got a flat on the." I'm like, "All right, well, get off on the next exit. I'll come back." And it was like twenty four miles a loop just to get back to where we were. Oh dear. You know, and it's like yeah, there's no off ramps. Mm-hmm. So. That, I think that's the, uh, that's the, I, that's the benefit of being able to travel and, and see the. Oh yeah. I, it's, I, I wouldn't change it. I mean, there's been definitely some, some hard times, you know, over the past four years, but the good times definitely outweigh the bad. And I've just gotten to see so much, meet so many people, experience a ton of stuff that like, I would have never been able to do, you know, yeah. if it weren't for my job. So I wouldn't change it even with all the bad stuff. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. You hope you hopefully you'll say that in twenty years. You know. Oh, I, I think we, we I get the medical sales job and whatever. There's always bad parts. You know. I mean. Oh yeah. A lot of the musicians I talk to, they don't. They literally don't know what like, city they're in. Like they wake up and they're like, after nine months of being on the road in a bus, and they're just like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that would be an interesting in. life. Yeah. So, at least we have the little little, little difference. Yeah, for sure. What, uh, what, what's been the most influential city you've been in? Oh, gosh. Hmm. Influential. Uh, I would say probably Phoenix. I would say either Phoenix or out in North Carolina and Greenville. Phoenix probably win just because it's a bigger city. Greenville was like smaller and just not exposed to as much. But Phoenix, you just 
you got exposed to a lot of different cultures and I, I don't know there's just a lot I could just feel like a lot happened you know yeah. while I was out there and it was just like more eye-opening experiences you know like meeting different people that came from all different walks of life you know and yeah you know it, it's it's common it's natural everyone has you know prejudices in a way you know or you think you know what's the word I'm looking for um just like your prejudgments kind of of like oh what, what this what person is going to be, be like, like yeah. or this culture or whatever and yeah it's nice when it's not that <laughs> sure so well I mean it's it's like what you, I think I'm trying to remember like I've been in Louisiana and people are super friendly I'm I, mm -hmm. I, I haven't traveled to too many. I'm trying to think if there's any been any places. Chicago, some of the people were a little, little, little rude, in like mm -hmm. downtown Chicago. But like outside in Illinois and Wisconsin, people were really nice. I, I, I don't know, but most of it seems like most of the people. I, maybe it's because I, I live in Los Angeles full time, so mm -hmm. everywhere's nicer than you know the, the people wise. Dallas has, has got some people into their own world, but, but yeah. outside of Dallas people are friendly yeah i, I just I'm... feel like i don't know that that phoenix metro area and yeah. the surrounding i'm talking like an hour hour and a half surrounding towns you know yeah. like probably i've spent the most time out there too of any other place i i did like five different assignments out there so oh, wow. i've lived in a lot of different areas around there and i've just experienced a lot and met a lot of people you know not from there who were like transplants you know, and natives that were from there. So that would probably be, I'd say that would be my answer. Yeah, my cousin lives in Mesa or Gilbert. And he keeps trying mm -hmm. to get me to, he's like, when are you going to move back? I'm like, Ugh. when are you going to stop getting into the 110, 115 degrees in the summer? Yeah. It's, if it weren't for that, I could definitely see myself of any place I've worked. I would go there probably. I, I um, uh, my dad lived in Payson. That's where it, mm -hmm. it was an hour and a half north. That's north. Yeah. And, um, it, it, that's, that's cause you don't get into the snow, mm -hmm. you get a little bit of snow, but not much, but you know, it's, it's that temperate climate that, yeah, that makes everything somewhat livable. Yeah. I mean, that's like the Sedona area and Flagstaff, yeah. you know, they're both, they're both a lot cooler in the summertime, even than, you know, Phoenix is, but it's an hour and a half, two hours up North. Oh, we used to go fishing every, every almost every weekend. We had a camper, my dad and I, and we'd go up in the White Mountains and through mm -hmm. Show Love Globe and Flagstaff, Prescott, and just camp out on the weekend and fish on and come home. Yeah, it nice it's summertime. pretty up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you'd leave the, the, the 120 degree heat and go up there and be like 75 degrees. You're like, oh. Yeah, that was that was something that was pretty interesting living out there. I remember it was like probably 85 degrees in Phoenix. and me and a group of travel nurses drove up to Flagstaff and skied and I'm yeah. like yeah. literally two hours away we're sweating and we're up here skiing yeah. <laughs> so I've done, that, I've done cool. that once here where you can go skiing in the morning and then we went surfing in the afternoon oh my gosh yeah best of both worlds right there yeah I've done that once because it's just yeah I, when you go skiing you want to um, spend the whole day skiing but we wanted to be able to say we did it so we were like, I mean, that's pretty cool. I don't know anybody that's ever said that. Like 22, 23. We're like, let's go up early and then we'll just take off a half, you know, buy a half day pass. Mm -hmm. and then we, we jetted home and went right, right to the ocean. That's the way to do it. Yeah. What the heck, right? Yeah. Got to be able to say you did it. Exactly. If you get to the chance to go to Alaska or Hawaii, what would be your top things to see there? Mm. I don't even know. I haven't done my research really to like have a list. Like normally for me, I like once I sign a contract, then I start yeah. looking up stuff of like, okay, I'm going to be in this area because you're not guaranteed, you know, like Anchorage, I've seen jobs and I've seen jobs in Juneau. I've seen some in like small towns. I don't even, I've never even heard of, you know? Yeah. So you can like hope to go to a big city that you're familiar with or something but you're not guaranteed that so i don't like to get my hopes up thinking like oh okay i'm gonna oh, go here you. you know so i 
you know, whether I get a travel assignment or if I just go for a vacation or something, yeah. I'll try and plan something out or start researching and be like, okay, like Hawaii, there's so many islands. I wouldn't know which one I'd want to stay on, you know? So if I'm going to go on a vacation, I'm going to do some research and be like, all right, this is the island I want to stay. These are the ones I want to visit. This is what, what I want to do on each island. And I'd be the same in Alaska because I'm not familiar. Now, like activities I'd want to do, like, yeah. you know, if I'm up in Alaska, it'd be cool to go ice fishing and, you know, do just like more of the winter activities that yeah I've not done here. Um, I'd like even to just do like dog sledding. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Just once. I mean, I don't want to become a dog sledder. I just want to yeah. be on a sled that's being dragged by fucking dogs. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I think it'd be really cool to like go back into like the brush country, you know, and yeah. like in like one of those planes that have the, the skis on them, like yeah, to the land, pontoons. you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, land in the water and well, can, you know, you what can, do you, you fly your own what do you fish or plane. I can't, I don't know how to do that. Well, you'll figure it out. I, I'd have to get trained on that one. Now you figure it out. Yeah. That's but that'd nice. be cool. You know, do, do some fishing or something and yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the same way like whenever i'm traveling to a place i always go you know what can i go see yeah i look at places like i'm i'm pretty like short-term planner yeah. when it comes to like okay i'm gonna be driving through here is there anything i can go see you know i'm not like four months out planning something no, unless I, it's like a gigantic like overseas trip or something like that we went, when we went to hawaii uh in april i went for work and then and of course wendy was able to come her schedule opened mm -hmm. up magically for Hawaii. Um, I would have never guessed that. <laughs> yeah. But we had a lot of things planned, but then like most of the stuff, like we went, we went swimming with manta rays. Oh, that's cool. And we found, it was the night before and we're like, what are all the boats out there doing? No, they're swimming with manta rays. And we're like, excuse me? We're like what? That's neat. Yeah. These manta rays are 16 feet across. Jeez. I'll, I'll send you a picture. If you, if you get to go, that's, I tell people now, I'm like, you should do that. Worth it. Only a couple okay. places in the world you can do it. Huh. I didn't know that. And um, so well, I'll tell you later. But they, they eat plankton, <laughs> right? So uh, mm -hmm. they 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 draw them up with these lights. And uh, imagine a stingray, but sixteen feet across. I mean, they're they're massive, and they swim this far from you. I mean, they're right on you. Oh wow! Yeah, pretty crazy. That is a little wild. Yeah, so that that, that uh, that's on the Big Island. So if you have to, when you have to, when you when you get to go to Hawaii, let me know. I'll tell you. I've been to uh, okay almost all islands. I've been to Lanai, but I've been to all the other ones. Yeah, I definitely. If I'm gonna go to Hawaii, I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for some recommendations. <laughs> like, yeah, well, what's it, worth it? What's not? Every island is completely different. Yeah, that's what I've heard. It's, it's it's bizarre. It's like I mean, Kauai is this big, and the Big Island. It's probably my favorite, but I mean, you have the dry side, mm -hmm. the Kona side, and then, you, and, and then you have a 12,000 or I think it's 12,000 feet up is the mountain, the, mm -hmm. the volcano where it snows and they actually yeah. ski on the top of that in Hawaii. Oh, that's wild. But then when you go on the other side, it's the wet side and the Hilo side and it's a rainforest. So mm -hmm. one side is I bet that's cool. rock and the other side is a, a rainforest and it's like 90 mm -hmm. miles across. Dang. I didn't yeah. realize it was that big. Yeah. That's pretty that's cool. The big island. So, yeah, I'll hook you up. Oh, oh you got to go to Oahu, though. Everyone goes to Oahu. Yeah. Honolulu and the North Shore and all that. Yeah. The dope. It's on my list. Just got to get there. Stop slacking. I know. Start making and money. Too many, with the, too many things. The medical sales will, will, will get you there. Yeah, hopefully. Making the money. That's what we can hope for. <laughs> Now, where is that job located? Is it going to be in Missouri or? Uh, it'll be in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, which will be good. I got my brother and uh, his wife and niece and nephew. They're all here, which little babies, you know, it's it's yeah. hard being away from them. That was probably another challenge of my job. You know, you got young niece and nephew that if you only get to see them a couple times a year, you know, they're going to be like, who are you? <laughs> I don't want to be an absent aunt, you know. Well, that's, that's, I mean, anyway, that's probably the biggest thing is missing birthdays, missing anniversaries, mm -hmm. graduations, you know, I mean, the, the amount of things that travelers have to go through to make it to those yeah. events. Yeah. It can be interesting. Yeah. It was challenging. That was, I, um, 
my niece, she was born three months, three and a half months ago. And I'm her godmother, but I couldn't make it in for her baptism because yeah. I was scheduled to work, you know, and I was like, that kind of is a bummer, but that's all part of it. I, they, they actually tried, well, they had scheduled our sales meeting on my, mm -hmm. on my oldest daughter's high school graduation day. Oh no. And I'm like, I'm not going. And they're like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm not missing my daughter's high school graduation because of yeah, my sales no. meeting. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So they actually, and, and then a couple other people had different events for that week. So they, they, they scheduled for the week after. So oh, good. I'm not missing it. It's not happening. Well, that's priorities right there. I don't blame you for that. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's mo most things I'll miss, but not that. Yeah. <laughs> don't happen. I would hope not. I'm sure your daughter would also hope to say. <laughs> well, yeah. What, but I mean, you know, I always think about it. It's like if, 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 if you, if you're in a band and that band schedules, you know, to be in Europe for, for three months, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to come back for, I mean, so there's always that give and take. Right. It's like that's, that's the negative of, of being on the road. I agree. So for me, at least it's like now, now it's a lot easier. The kids are older. So. Yeah. So what, what is the way for my listeners to follow you or see what you have coming up? Is it Instagram? Do you like Oh gosh. Well, I'm not, I'm not like a, a social media no, guru not. or anything. Um, I mean, I like to post what I'm doing and stuff. I would say I'm probably most active on Instagram and I should know what my name is, but I don't, I think it's Lainey.Evishi, which is not the easiest to spell, but I can send it to you. Um, well, no, I, I know it. I'll, I'll, I'll find it now. I'll, I'll have it on my website. So yeah. Lainey.Evishi on Instagram. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't do anything else. I don't do the TikTok. I don't do Twitter. I don't do any of that. I don't, I don't have my own podcast like you, you know, cool um, kid over there. Um, yeah, I, I would say I'm, I'm post most of my travels and things on Instagram. Why is that? Why, why, why don't you have more social? I'm just curious. Cause, uh, I just, I don't, I, I actually hate social media <laughs> and like what it's done for the world. I just think it just, I don't know. It's, there's so much negatives to it. There's a ton of positives too, you know, Yeah. but, um, for me, I've just never wanted to like get so wrapped up in it. So I just limit myself. I mean, I'm still on Instagram more than I should be. I'll admit that, but, um, yeah, all the other platforms and I have no desire to be an influencer or any of that. Like, yeah. I sometimes I don't even like posting pictures because I'm like, I really actually don't want people to know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> so yeah. I go in waves. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, this is fun. This is cool. I want to remember these things and I'll post them. And other times I'm like, yeah, I just kind of want to be incognito and have people wonder what, what, what am I doing? Where am I at? You know, Where's what's going on in my life? You should give her a call. Yeah, exactly. So cool. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll put the one link on there. <laughs> on, on, on the website but i appreciate the time I, I think it's interesting because on the business on like you know i get my entertainers and i get the athletes and all that and and mm -hmm. they, they get big numbers but then like the business people it's it's six months i'll get a, a, a dm from somebody saying hey I, I i watched that podcast or i watched the episode on youtube or whatever and it really helped me make some decisions and i'm like oh fuck, okay yeah so. well i for any any of your nurse um, you know, followers or anything like that. If you get the opportunity to travel nurse, I would hands down recommend every nurse to do it if they are able. It's just, it's so worth it. You learn so much in your career and just like, I don't know, it, it helps you way more than it would hurt you in my opinion. So, yeah. well, even I would I, recommend I it. If, if you had the ability like, I mean, you know, if you get married and have kids and you still want to be a nurse, you could still work at a hospital and be a nurse. But, yeah. But you at least you had those experiences of traveling and, mm -hmm. and, and working in different hospitals in different, different settings. Yeah. It, there's so many opportunities. I mean, really a lot of people don't even realize it. Um, to technically be considered a travel nurse, you just have to work 60 miles away from your home. So some, some hospitals will say a hundred miles. I got you. Um, it just depends, you know, what they're, what they're willing to pay. But I mean, if you're going to make 
twice to three times the amount of money yeah. and have more flexibility and, you know, I, why not? And a lot of people don't realize that. And they're even starting to do things called local travel nurses where they waive that, that mileage, I got you. And, but you just, you don't make your housing stipend because you already live in that city, yeah. but you'll still, you'll still make additional money, you know, that you wouldn't as a full-time nurse. So it, there's a lot to it, to travel nurses. Um, and I just, I just think it's worth it. If, if people can do it, it's totally worth it. Well, that's, I mean, and, and hopefully that's what this episode will help anybody that is thinking about it or contemplating it or, mm -hmm. you know, it, it'll, hopefully it'll help them. Yeah. Well, if they have questions, I will answer. I, I've helped a lot of people get into it and, you know, even just answer questions if they're curious and sometimes they yeah. don't get into it, but I'll be straightforward. I'll tell you what companies I love to work for, which ones I will never work for again and why, and just, yeah, you know. There's a lot, there's a lot of politics to it that people it's don't know. I got yeah. at, at the beginning, you know, I was young and naive and I believed everything that my recruiter Four years told ago. me. Yeah. And you know, it's crazy. Like I missed out on so much and like, ultimately we're just a number to them. We're making them money. So yeah. like it, you just, you just learn so much about the industry and you know, who's for you, who's against you. And there's, I, there's I, a lot to it. I, I've been, I've had several people ask me, how, how do we, you know, how do I become an, a, an apparel rep? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow. I, I always tell people, I go, it's, it's, it's very hard to get into, but it's also very hard to leave. Because yeah. once you're in, you're in, you know, but it's, it can be difficult because you got to wait for spaces to open up. One of my Tell me about it. <laughs> well, I know one of my neighbors is the Skechers rep. And, oh, wow. uh, because Skechers is based here. I mean, they're literally, their headquarters is literally three miles away from me, but mm -hmm. uh, he has boot barn as a, as a, as a, an account. And so we, so we always talk because his garage looks just like mine. It's all samples, got shoes and yeah. Uh, I go, how's it going? Oh, that's... He's lying. He goes, yeah. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he wouldn't, tra he wouldn't trade it, you know. It's like, mm -hmm. So it's tough. But y you'll find out. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to a change. Yeah, it'll be but, good, though. Yeah, I'm excited. I'll be seeing you so soon, Pete. What's that? You're going to be up. I said, I'll be seeing you so soon. You're going to be in Dallas? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, but you go for fun. It's totally different. Uh, I'm working for Jess. Are you really? You're going to, you're going to yeah. do it again? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be there all week. I'll get in Monday and stay till I think Saturday. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming to be working some accounts. Sunday. Well, I'll be, I'll be there. Soon. Yeah. Cause Wednesday and Thursdays are my boot bar days. Yeah. And that's all I have a schedule and they're booked. So crazy. And I'm taking an Uber from the, from the, the airport to right to the market. Cause I have a boot barn like a half hour later. Hmm. Well, hopefully day. you don't have any issues with your traveling. Can't do anything about it right now. So I know. I you know, know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't stress about that too much because I can't do anything about it. That's how I am too. I don't know why people I was in, put that I, extra stress on them. Uh, God, it was probably like five or six years ago. We had our sales meeting in, in Denver. And then I was flying right to, I think Dallas to open up the Denton boot barn. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so I was flying, I was going to fly down with Jess and all that. And, and, you know, leaving Denver and God, we were all at the airport and my flight and no, I was flying into Houston. I was open up the Houston one and all the other flights were on time, except for mine. And it was <laughs> like three hours later, four hours late Oh no! And, and Denver airport. I got into I got into the airport so late that the rental car place was closed. So oh, I had to Uber to my hotel and then in the morning Uber back to the airport because I already paid for the car. So then I had to Uber, pick up the car and then drive to Boot Barn and help st open up the store. It's like on four hours of sleep. So, yeah, I think that's I rough. 2.30, yeah, sucked. But, yeah, but it makes for a good story. It does, yeah. That's all that matters, that's all you need. So, yeah, I'll see you in, in a week or so. I'm Appreciate looking forward time. to it. It's always a good time. And then I'll, I'll make sure I'll change your voice patterns on this 
episode. So. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be curious to listen back to it. <laughs> It'll be fun. See, it wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't. It was way, way easier than I, I was expecting. Honestly, I thought you were going to be like hounding me with like some questions that put me on the spot that I'm like sweating over here. <laughs> well, let me stop the recording. Hold on.